Hello, friends and crew from Pretty Profundo. I'm so happy to be here this evening because I have a very special guest. This is a very um, dear guest for me. I am, I'm quite a fan. And this is Tarot Lumination. Hello. Greetings, 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 Pretty Profundo. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for... Um, for having me and be part of, of, of this project. So there's so many things I wanna to talk to you. First of all, I wanna tell you that I'm a love driver. Um, I'm a member of Tarot Illumination, very proud to be a member. And I also wanna tell you that I'm a fan. Um, yes. I found you um, as, a, you know, as a tarot reader. I know you have a lot more tricks in your back. You're a very talented musician tarot reader yes um, yes a spiritual coach and many other things yeah uh, but we're going to start from basically from what i believe that people knows you better that is right now the tarot okay so i love that name tarot illumination where does that come from okay <laughs> i don't know if anyone's ever asked that question before it's I, I, you're catching me off guard so, that's, that's the way it works here. Okay, well, I will tell you exactly what happened. I was uh, walking down one of my local streets one day where it's all super hip and trendy, and there's this like little mystical bookshop, and I went through an, an evening there, and it was all about uh, expanding your uh, psychic abilities. And I, as you, I've, we, we've talked before about this, I think, where... I used to work as a, a consultant for psychics and mediums, and I got sick of everything, so I went away. But I got a strong push from my angels to go into the event, and I came out the other side very, very, uh, let's say, changed. And I realized, oh my gosh, there's no way out. We're going to have to do something. What am I going to do? This means, oh no, I'm going to have to open a freaking YouTube channel. Oh, no. And then I wandered up and down the street, and I went to one of the little cafes nearby, and I sat there, and I put my head in my hands, and I thought, I don't know what to do. I mean, this is, this is silly. I mean, and this, is, this is the last thing I ever wanted to do. But um, as typically what happens here, I kind of got a nudge on my shoulders and my arms, and they basically said it was just, a, just a, like a – just like having a person coming up to you, like a stranger in a cafe, and they said, it's, it's terror illumination. Okay, and that was it. I didn't think I th thought it up at all. I felt like uh, one of my angels came up and uh, basically put an arm around my shoulder and said, it's terror illumination. Wow. Okay, and that was it. That is a fantastic... Um story behind the, the name of the channel. I'm glad I asked you that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for asking. <laughs> no, <laughs> I want to I I get some clarification, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of your fans and listeners are also maybe want this clarification. When you say that you were a medium consultant, what are we talking about here? Oh, it gets very weird and wobbly. Uh, I, I think uh, we might have hinted that um, I, sp I spent a lot of years in Hollywood and TV and movies and things like that. And I don't have any kind of huge profile or anything, so don't bother going. <laughs> uh, but, but I used to work for quite some time uh, on a, I got hired out of word of mouth and a recommendation because of previous experience with some friends of mine. And uh, she called me up and said, hey, there's a, there's a really cool job going on with this show, this TV show, and uh, they're looking for a consultant who can help them uh, with their psychics and mediums who are wigging out, and also their other shows where they do these uh, events out, mm -hmm. in, uh, out in the streets with people uh, to witness and uh, experience live psychic events. And I went... Oh, no, please. And, and, and then she said, oh, seriously, it's really good pay. You'll love it. And I said, okay, well, I'm desperate for a job. So, okay, I did it. I signed up. They were very happy. And I, uh, I became the consultant on that show. Wow. 
here in LA, they call it um, uh, a technical advisor. So I became that technical advisor. So I was that person who was just always shadowing the director or the psychic or the stars of the show or the kids or the moms or the people or wh whoever was involved in the show. And I just had to pay very close attention. And if the producers or the director or the psychic or the medium uh, had a problem and they couldn't solve it, uh, they would come to me and I would give them my feedback. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, um, it, uh, yeah, it gets very weird from there. There's a lot of weird stories from there. Yeah, but that's basically uh, how that happened. And uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I was working, I did that. That was my job. And there were several occasions where uh, I had to deal with like celebrity psychics who were like completely wigging out because they're on camera. Like, oh my God, I'm going to get outed. <laughs> in fr and it was just, all, there was just so many uh, nightmare situations uh, about, uh, and I eventually I had to leave the show because I realized that, because uh, I never watched the show. <laughs> I'm sorry to admit I never watched it, but uh, I was told by a couple of friends of mine who watched it because they're in the, in the industry, and they said, hey, do you have any idea what the producers are doing with this show? They're actually trying to trash people. They're trying to uh, spoof and out the psychics and the mediums. And so they're making it set up like when the, when the events are happening, oh, look, we're going to do that and that and that, and we're going to do these wonderful psychic things and medium stuff, and everything's going to be awesome. And then they... Wow. And they edit and retweak everything so it looks like it's a disaster. It's just like, you know, basically how to embarrass people on camera. And so that the audience has a really good laugh and they can point fingers and go, ha, I knew it was just a scam. Ha, that kind of thing. It's very wow. That's a, that's that That went south fast. Wow. Yeah. I, I was only on the show for about a year. Uh, and uh, I, I decided to walk well away. Uh, when we started getting into Ouija boards and moms and dads and kids and their families showing up, I, it's almost impossible for me to describe some of the mayhem that was going on <clears throat> in the spirit realm. You know, we, we talk about that right. on the channel where mm -hmm. in, in reality, uh, there is a veil between what we think of as our three-dimensional world and then <clears throat> everything and anything else that's beyond that. And um, seriously, uh, a lot of people who come to the Terra Illumination channel, and probably for you too, um, they are already aware that the veil between what we think of as life and what we think of as the great beyond, the veil is about as thin as a piece of fine silk. It's very, very, it's almost invisible. That's the problem. We perceive it as a massive disparity. Like there's the world and then there's heaven and there's all the angels. But the reality is, it's like that. The whole thing is one massive mushy blob. Will you will you say that this was affecting you, affecting your energy? Because of course, um, you're an empath. Um, most spiritual people, and of course, readers have very highly uh, intuition. So, will you say that that was affecting you? I would say yes. The, the actual process wasn't affecting me. What I was not enjoying was being exposed to everything across the veil that is unhealthy. Okay? Mm -hmm. When he thinks about the veil, like they think about angels and God and heaven and my lost puppies, my, my dead relatives and aunts and uncles and my lovers from the past lives and my lovers from the future and everything like that. But there's everything else as well. You know, it's just like if you're walking downtown or something, I, um, you know, there's a bank robbery over here or there's some um, nuisance over there or there's a bunch of people that creep you out. It's the same thing over there. Wow. So you have to now, you have to, when you are fully exposed, when you are across the veil and you're operating in that veil and there's no filters, you are exposed to all of the doo-doo over there as well as all of the good stuff. But the thing That's is... True. You know, a lot of the spiritually active people and aspirants, people who want to do all that, um, either they're not aware of it or they don't allow for it. 
And when they get exposed to it, like when, when somebody goes through a massive life change, you know, like a trauma or a cathartic event, or they do years of practice in order to open up their spirit, and they finally do cross over, and it's not what they thought. And they start to feel like they're going insane, or like, what's happening? I'm seeing things, I'm feeling things. It's not like what I thought. Oh, my G-O-D, what's happening? It gets weird, and I'm just like anybody else. I just want the sweet stuff. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I had to shut all that stuff down, and I, and I have to learn how to develop my filters to a much more extreme level than I had before. And I already have a lot of what I think of as guardian angels. So to take it to the next extreme, oh my gosh, it was a lot of work. It took years. So talking about this, I want to recall uh, a moment that it was, I mean, it's been stuck in my mind and that's, I think, in my heart too, because there's so many um, tarot readers in YouTube. And I, I guess everywhere, but not everybody does it with their soul. Um, really a reading that you can see through that reader. You can feel their soul. You can feel that they're doing it not for the fame, not for the likes, not for the money. They're just doing it because it's part of, of, of service. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and I, I, re I can recall a moment that it really, it really... That's really when I became really a fan. As you did a reading for cancer and you started to cry. You started to cry and I was so touched. I really, I was like, I'm not a cancer. I was just checking the video and, and you started to cry. And I went like, oh my gosh. It seems yeah. like you really feel and you really feel every single world <laughs> that you say. But you know, you you leave what you're reading. It's like you're leaving that that moment, that that energy, and that's really powerful. But at the same token, where we're talking about duality, I just want the candy stuff. I just want the the light and not the dark. Yeah. How do you deal with that, and how do you protect yourself as a reader when you have a heart? I mean, over there. I mean, you can see your heart when you read. How do you protect mm. yourself? Actually, you've touched on a very delicate subject. This is what we do in Pretty Profundo. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other, here's another thing is that uh, for some reason or other, uh, we get quite a lot of visitors over here at Terra Illumination who are like, like what I think of as super advanced beings, you know. They're already operating in the psychic realms. They're already energy healers. Uh, uh, Reiki, yoga, already advanced in this, and already working like in the arts or something where it's, I think of as very, very rarefied energy where it's often very, very hard to navigate and where people in those kind of realms are become very vulnerable to like what you could call, some people call like, oh, psychic attack, ah! you know, Ouija boards or something or disparate beings from the other side who are disruptive and stuff. Just like ending up walking down an alley and discovering, oh, there's a bunch of gangbangers at the end, and I don't have my taser, and I don't have my mace with me. Uh-oh. So, about the protection, yeah. Uh, the reality is, is that I already knew from previous experience that once you open up your spirit and your heart to this realm, you are fully exposed. So, how do you, let's just say you're an aspiring psychic medium or a spiritualist or uh, like an energy healer, and you just want to do good. You love doing this stuff. You've met a few of your angels, and you are on path, and you want to do something with that. A lot of people have this tremendous urge to want to heal and serve and uh, improve humanity, and that's great. When you do that at these kind of frequencies, you're heavily exposed to a lot of very toxic stuff from the other side that's invisible. So how do you protect yourself? Well, uh, the only answer I have right now is number one, I do a lot of self-healing. I call it self-healing. It's a lot of work. Well, at least five days a week, I probably put in about an hour every morning. It's just like, you know, uh, yoga junkies and jog junkies and fitness junkies and uh, gym rats, they have to go off and do this stuff 
they get in, they're up at 5.30 in the morning, they do their gym, they're all sweaty, right. they're back and they put on their suits and ties or whatever. So I do my own little miniature version of that. And the whole idea is to get my whole being into a, into a, into a highly precise format where uh, I call it energy management, where I am able to receive all the good information, all the good, what I think of as healing power of love frequencies that are appropriate and healthy. And I develop very, very fine filters to keep all the CRAP uh, out of it as much as possible. Uh, that's my personal physiological stuff that I do in my self-healing, which is what I'm starting to share in tiny, tiny amounts on the first Fridays. Yeah, that's what I want to tell you. I want to mention everybody that um, I was the last Friday and their uh, first Friday healing event. And it was really amazing because I had the opportunity to have a little flavor of what you're yeah. talking about right now. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys now. But it's very private and it's very weird and it's unconventional. So I've been very, very cautious and um, lacking in confidence about sharing it. But the reality, the other reality is that on this side of the screen here, physiologically, you know, I'm just like everyone else. I have to live through my body. And I'm, I'm very, very conscious of like the energy fields and the layers around the body. And that's what we work with in healing and self-healing. But right. I'm also very aware that I have, either it's just sheer luck, or maybe I inherited this, or maybe I earned it or something in past lives or future lives. But I have a massive team of guardian angels. And when I met, one day when I met a really powerful psychic, seriously heavy duty, but he was a professional, and he saw what I had, he completely freaked out. Completely freaked out because he wasn't used to that kind of stuff. It's as though, it's as though uh, I'm very fortunate and like I feel I have like, literally a team of guardian angels that have mind-boggling abilities. Um, it's like I can get to a point where I have to. I can completely surround myself in what appears, like if I could describe it, it would be like a sphere. A sphere uh, that is so like condensed and so strong that and it becomes very reflective that nothing can get in. Did you, do you know those little animals called armadillos? Of course, they're cute. You know those little those little creatures. I call them wood lice. They're like they're about this big and they're gray and they wiggle around with about twenty legs. And if you see them, they curl up in a little ball. You know. Okay. I know the armadillos, but I don't know the little tiny thingy it's, with it's all those. It's like a little worm. We used to I used to call them wood lice. And what they if they get scared, they go. Whoosh, and they cover themselves in a little ball. And oh. you don't, it just looks like it's like a, they're like a little pebble on the ground or just a little seed or something. I think I've seen them. I've seen them. Yeah. And then once they feel that it's safe to come out, they unwrap themselves and then they all their legs come out and they just wiggle on. And so that's what happens to me. I get, um, I get a, uh, like a, a shield that comes around. And it acts like a highly protective filter. Not only that, it's actually uh, extremely resilient to extremely hostile energy uh, yeah. that exists on the other side. Because believe me, it does exist. I know. I have I know that. that. I'm very, very lucky, but I have to nurture it. I have to respect it. You can't take it for advantage. So now, that's my own, own self-protection. That's how I protect myself. I'm not saying... Uh, everyone else has that or can do that or should do that, but it is possible because that's, I, that's what I have. That's, uh, that's really important. And there's something else I want to I wanna talk about, something that you say all the time, and I believe that is really important um, to talk about because I believe that the healing needs to start with our own selves. You have to love yourself in order to be able to love everybody. You have to heal yourself in order to be able to heal everybody. And you talk about a lot about uh, something that I love is this about love thyself. So can you explain us a little bit more? What does that mean for you? It's the hardest thing to understand, the hardest thing to do, 
that I've ever encountered in my own personal life. And when I do, I do a lot of personal readings here. And well, it's, it's really, it's like, oh, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm learning a lot as I go too, but it's really kind of a profound experience to, to come to this realization almost in every situation, the ultimate answer is love thyself. But the question is, how? What does that look like? How do I love thyself? What does that mean? What, I mean, it sounds so contradictory because, you know, uh, we've talked about this before in, in private where, you know, people are conditioned to uh, heavily compromise themselves or dumb themselves down just to go along, to get along, and everything turns into this, like, uh, low-frequency mush. Correct. And uh, what can often happen is that you, risk, you start realizing, wow, I'm actually self-sabotaging. And just instead of loving myself, I am actually self-harming. People do jobs that they absolutely hate, and they wonder why they end up with cancer or systemic, you know, hideous, life-threatening diseases. Or they wonder why they end up becoming alcoholics or whatever it might be. And, you know, there's so much pressure to function in a certain way. Right. A lot of times what happens here at the channel is uh, people arrive and because it sounds kind of weird, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's almost like terror elimination is like, uh, like a last, it's the last stop. You know, where do you go? Because I, I've had professional healers can come here, uh, professionals, um, you know, very wealthy people, very poor people. So super high power professionals, super ultra brainiacs, corporate honchos, uh, moms, kids, teenagers, housewives, guys, all, all the stuff. But in the end, we can go round and round forever in the tarot and pull this reading and that reading. But ultimately, it comes down to love thyself because uh, without that, it's just a question of degree. Question okay. of degree. Uh, Dare Elimination has to work at it on a daily basis. But my feeling, my personal feeling is loving, to love thyself is essentially doing the most honorable thing that you can to be you so that you are oscillating, resonating, transmitting and receiving energy at the highest levels of integrity that is possible for you as an individual. Forget everyone else. Forget the rest of the planet. Forget the kids, the lovers, the ex-husbands, the new lovers, uh, your jobs, your commitments, obligations, uh, contracts, credit cards, mortgages, car payments, college loans, uh, whatever it might be. Ultimately, what is right for you, uh, not necessarily in a self-serving way, but what your deepest gut heart Correct. tells you. And that's very hard to do for a lot of people. It's just I agree. I agree with you 100%. And I think that this is a topic that needs to be um, there. And we have to talk about it more and more because we need to create awareness. I mean, in this society, when you love yourself or you put yourself first, it's tend to be seen like you are selfish. Exactly. Um, I mean, and it's and very, that's very... So, so wrong. I mean, that's such a belief system that I feel that at this point and the shift in humanity and the planet it's not longer acceptable. It is not because uh, I, I just saw some, to me it was horrific. I don't watch the news anymore. The nearest I get is checking the weather channel every day for a couple of locations where I have friends and family and loved ones. And that's it. And if I catch a glimpse of something there and it takes me to something curious, then I might follow that. But but normally, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to love myself better. And that makes me, oddly enough, it actually works. I become more effective as terror elimination. I become more valuable to myself and to others. And I, be, I provide a better service. So I'm a living example of what works. It, but it, I have to understand, it's very contradictory to my, my own experience because I was just as uh, insane and self-destructive and full of self-sabotage as anybody out there uh any of the clients have come here or anything like that and so i know i know the shadow side of all of this mm -hmm. and so when i was watching this little clip somewhere about uh love and sexuality and relationships in different parts of the world 
I was just heartbroken, just heartbroken to see how everybody's essentially living in these, um, it's not deliberately self-sabotaging behavior patterns, but in these very sterile, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, heartless, soulless situations. It's where, it's where almost like all the love has been stripped out. And so people, like millions of people are living like zombies, living like, uh, like automatons, robots, like you do this, you do that, you eat this, you sleep that, you do it here, over there, you go over there, and then you die. And then right. what happened? And then you're on the other side, you're thinking literally, what, what the heck was that? I was like 62 years old or something, or I was 17, or I was 105. Or, or, right. And then you have to come back here and figure it out. It becomes a puzzle. And when you love thyself, here's one of the things that I learned from my brother. My brother is not interested in any of this stuff at all, but he is a very successful person, a completely different, radically different life and lifestyle. And he's extremely good at love thyself, but you never know because he's extremely modest, extremely almost invisible. He's always concerned about taking care of himself, minding his business, minding his own business, and the ones that he loves, basically his wife and his kids. And it's mind-boggling, like when he was, uh, I don't know, he, uh, he had an amazing contract at the Olympics once when there were these massive bombings and explosions. And he basically sat there, we talked about the story, and the only thing he cared about is like, am I still alive? Yes. Is my crew still alive? Yes, good. Okay, that's good. Let's just keep going, folks. What do we do now? Uh, he's very good at just basically saying, you know, mind your own business. Take care, take care of yourself. Love yourself. That doesn't mean being selfish and mean and greedy and a narcissist and an egomaniac. It means literally mind your own business. Love thyself. Do the most loving things that you can for yourself. Make yourself healthy. Make yourself um, true, authentic, so that you are true, like heart, body, mind, and soul are all aligned as one. Body, mind, heart, and soul, all aligned as one. So you're not just living through your head and everything else is just some like dissociated uh, freakoid being. Yeah, and I think that that's, that's why for me it's so important that we talk about this because, um, you know, you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. So when you are aware of certain things, you start thinking about them and reflecting about them. And eventually, if you have the strength and the desire, you can, you can change things. That, I believe that, that that could happen. Now, I wanna play something. I wanna just have a little bit of fun. We have been talking about very profound stuff because of course, this is pretty profound. Yeah, that's pretty profound, yeah, that's pretty profound. yeah. Uh -huh. I, get I get it, I get it. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to tell you certain words and I want you to tell me the first thing that it brings into your mind. So okay. you need to be quick. I don't okay. want you to you know, like three hours later, everybody's sleeping. No. So this I'm going to start. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Tarot illumination. Are is you ready? Tarot illumination. Got it. Okay. Money. Money. Uh, fluidity, power, light, L-I-G-H-T, yep, from heaven, tarot, talent, tarot, tarot, <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to say something here. I hope I don't offend, offend every other tarot reader on the planet. I'm just going to say the word. Props. <laughs> I'm sorry. For tarot illumination, the tarot are, is a prop. It's a way to open the portal to the great beyond. So the tarot is technically a prop. It's, it's a beautiful thing in its own right, but I am not beholden to the tarot itself. The tarot is a tool, and it's a prop, and it works for tarot illumination. Wow, I like that. Reach. 
R I C H. Yes. Are you are you having fun with my accent? I don't no, have an accent. It's accent. the technology. I just want to make absolutely <laughs> sure that I'm hearing what I'm hearing. Rich, like rich or rich. Rich. Nature, land, water, trees, warm, clean, good company, sleep, rest, music, art, writing, companionship, campfires. Destiny. <laughs> You're making it every day. You're creating your own destiny every day. Moon. Magic, magic. Fear, elemental, shadows, femininity, deep, deep hypersensitivity. Cuddling. Sun. Happy. Light. Frequency. Music, harmony, the sweet stuff. Energy. I'll do a visual. <laughs> is something you, do. you have to own it in your physical body. It's something that I have to uh, work with every day. I call it energy management. It's taking that energy, all the energy that moves and works, moves through your body, mind, heart, and soul, and then figuring out what to do with it. It's out there. You're swimming in it all day, all the time. <clears throat> you are receiving energy. You are transmitting energy. What is the level? How, what, what is your level of certification in what I call energy management? Are you managing your energy? Terra Illumination does everything possible to try and manage the energy that comes through the hands, the feet, the voice, the physical body, the heart. Intuition. Listening, listening, listening. Society. Uh, okay, I'm just going to say what I feel. Society, <laughs> society needs a lot of work. <laughs> oh gosh, I hope I'm. I, 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 that's you. Ask, and that's fine. There's no right or wrong answers. Yeah, I'm just laying this. We, we need a lot of work. There's an awful lot of work that needs to be done. Needy. M E E T I N G. Like no, needy, like someone who's needy, someone who's all the time needing oh, something. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Affection. Needy, I, oh, I'm very careful. I use the word caution. Very, very have to. I have to be very, very careful. If you, if your body is sensing neediness mm -hmm. from another. Mm, I, I, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but be extremely careful. Be very, very, very careful. <laughs> Love tribe. Yeah. Bam, ker, blam. Well, I'm sure there's all sorts of love tribes out there. You know, maybe there's a wine or a fragrance, or maybe there's some kind of supermodel clothing line or something, but we have... Terra Illumination Love Tribe, thank you very much. And so that you know, this is like a live, this is a live recording interview and everything. The Terra Illumination Love Tribe was actually christened by uh, one of the, uh, the members here, Terra Illumination. And her, uh, I'll just give you the screen name, it's Abby. And she uh, tuned into the energy here very early on. She figured it out way before Terra Illumination figured it out. And she gave me a lot of guidance, and she still gives me guidance. Like, you have to understand, it isn't just Terra Illumination. It's Terra Illumination Love Tribe, okay? It's completely different. You're not a regular tarot channel, okay? Okay, you, so you do the Terra Illumination, but please understand, 
that there's this whole other thing going on. So I know happening here. It's literally like family, and it's actually starting to happen in a very small way, like germinating. There is literally a Terra Illumination love tribe, and it's remarkable how the members are so supportive and helpful towards each other. How they help each other to heal. And that is true. And I just want to mention that if you guys are not still live, um, part of the of the membership, the Love Tribe membership, or if you hasn't had a chance to check Tire Illumination, please do so anytime. But every Sunday, uh, you are live for a bunch of hours. I don't know if it's three, four, five hours. And you have all these people coming and all this fans of yours. And it's really nice. So it's every Sunday. At what time is, is it exactly? Right now, we start at 6 o'clock on Pacific Standard Time, but I'm actually thinking of going to 5 o'clock because it's so late for most of the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to adapt. Thank you for mentioning that. Compassion. Compassion? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I can't help it. I'm, I'm, I have to be so careful with this because I like to, when I feel like I want to hug somebody, I just want to hug somebody. <laughs> I also learned the hard way that you just can't go and do that all day. Uh, it freaks people out. So compassion has to be very, very carefully measured. It's so easy because I see it here so many times with the clients who come here for personal readings and things. It's just like so many people with such big, fat, rich hearts, they're like compassion junkies. And what happens is they're constantly giving, 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 and giving so much compassion, but and they're then they're depleting themselves. Correct. Time for them, it's it's so so painful for a loving, and that, compassionate and that person. That's really connected with the last topic we were talking about: the love of thyself. Oh it's that completely is connected. Especially if you're compassionate. Classic examples would be anybody, male or female, if you're very loving and caring and you're constantly uh, caring for others uh, to, the, to the point where you are depleting yourself. That's a serious problem. You cannot be a compassion. Being a compassion junkie might be okay for a while because it feels so satisfying to uh, get to that threshold in life where you really seriously get off on helping others to heal and grow and evolve. If you right. turn that into, if you let that turn into an addiction, you can really go downhill very, very rapidly and you can end up worse off than anybody you're trying to heal. Right. Yeah, it's a problem. And, and the last word, I know I put you through fire. Um, sorry about that, but that's what we do here. <laughs> And the last word will be TL. Well, I never ever imagined I would ever have like a nickname TL, like letters, you know, um, whatever it is. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. Uh, people started putting it on the screen like, hey, TL. And I thought, wow, that's cool. <laughs> right. I, I really like it. TL, it's kind of cool. It sounds nice. And I kind of. sweet, right? I'm kind of used to it. I actually like it. I actually like being TL. There's, there's the T, there's the L. I like it. Right. Yep. Personal. So, you know, I don't really see myself as Terra Illumination. I see this more like a phenomenon or like a brand. Like it's its own thing. And I'm more like a dad or a mom or a parent of a, a weird thing. And my job is to uh, nurture this thing. So, yeah, I, you know, there's a person here. There's this, like, I am this blob. I have a head and arms and hands and feet and so on. And it is personal in that I'm the embodiment of terra illumination, but I honestly feel that terra illumination is more like a phenomenon. So before I forget, now that you're touching your arms and everything, will be maybe potentially the next time Pretty Profundo does an interview with you. Can we see your face? Could that be a possibility or you just want to, it's a mystery on um, TL? Who is this man? Okay, well, so that's, the time. that's another conversation. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, what's that over there? Oh, look, I better get another one of these. Hold on. Uh, I can't remember what we're talking about. Goodbye. Thank you. It's been wonderful. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get personal here. Uh oh. What makes you happy, TL? What makes you happy? What <laughs> brings you happiness? What makes me happy? Yeah, what brings you happiness to your soul, to your being, to you know? Oh, it's gonna get very, very personal here. I told you I'm gonna get a little bit personal, but yeah. that's what people want to know. Uh, well, uh, this is gonna sit. Oh, this is awkward because <laughs> I have my own energy here. But the reality is, terra illumination isn't just terra illumination. There is a lot of the energy that I feel comes through the channel is through a another portal, like and like there's a there's a there's tears of it, you know. T I E R S, where I am in a what I what I would describe as a loving relationship with another person that allows me to be this mm. and in such a way that I couldn't be. And that's kind of what my happiness is. My joy is um, it's like there's more um, like term elimination, this thing is very important to me in my life. But there's other things that are more. There's, there's a certain thing that is more important, and that's where I get everything. That's where I get all my nurture, all my sustenance, all my joy, all my happiness, and it's extremely private. And it's my own business. And I love, and I'm, I feel so incredibly blessed. And really all I can say at this moment, uh, I don't want to hint at anything else because it wouldn't be fair. Uh, on uh, my loved one, my loved ones, and uh, because uh, we each have a right to our, I would say, our boundaries, our privacies, and what we consider uh, respectful and courteous. So I'm just gonna leave, I'll just leave it at that. My happiness is this, and being here doing this with you, it brings me great joy to be here with you tonight doing this. Uh, uh, but there's even more. That's my business. That's me loving myself. It's nothing to do with anybody else. It's just terra illumination with mystery. That's awesome. So I would like to ask you, um, who are your greatest mentors? And doesn't need to be in terms of tarot or spirituality. Oh, okay. Well, I can name general. one absolutely for sure. No question about it. Uh, Paul McCartney. Uh, the Beatle guy. Yeah. Yeah, because I love music. Uh, as you probably know, I do have a strong interest in music and art and writing. And I've been exposed to mind-boggling opportunities and things. Uh, but for some reason, I, I have Paul McCartney dreams. You know, he's... he's <laughs> okay. He's, you know, he is like... Uh, he's, you know, he's up there with uh, the masters, so to speak. Have you seen him play? Because I mean, he's alive, have you? No, I know, well, that's the thing. I've never, I've never met him, but I have very, very intimate, personal Paul McCartney dreams. Okay, Paul McCartney, if you are watching this interview, TL, <laughs> I'm to meet you. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell, or can I tell you anybody who knows Paul McCartney, just shoot me an email, let people from the know, we will, we will. Okay. Well, Just saying. very, very weirdly, because, um, you know, I've been in the music industry for long ago, and I had the opportunity to get very close to that world, uh, the Lennon-McCartney world, and I was really just a little kid at the time. Um, but that energy infuses me because of his, uh, I see him as a highly advanced spiritual being, where mostly his craft and his work is very selfless about bringing joy to the planet. Uh, good words, good tunes, and good beats that generate happiness, entertainment, laughing, singing, and dancing, which is extremely good for the soul, then the body and the mind and the heart. That is right. I, I resonate know. very, very closely, and I have Paul McCartney dreams when I'm really, really stressed out. I will guarantee I'll have a Paul McCartney dream and he will, he will help me figure things out. He comes like an, he's like an archangel for me. And you know, it's funny that I ask you that and your answer, because this is going to take me to the next topic. I want to talk to you that is about music and the passion that you have for music. 
I know that uh, you compose um, when you go to the um, Love Tribe and you share those events. We can sometimes have the opportunity to listen uh, to your songs. I want to ask you, if are you the composer of the songs? And also, how does this start? I mean, are, did you study music uh, or this is just a yeah. hobby? What is this passion in music? That you I, I started very, very, very young with music. I was always intrigued by the tunes and the words and the beats. And any of the music that you hear on the Terra Illumination channel is Terra Illumination. It's very primitive in the production because I'm not a very good producer, but I like to write and perform. And so we're, at Terra Illumination, we're trying to get to the point where we can make the music a more substantial part of the channel and more a part of the brand. So it's more fun. So people can become more part of the love tribe, literally just like old fashioned, like just imagine like uh, stories from the, uh, like the fifties or the sixties when um, people were really opening up to, to uh, the adventure of music and in, in a very vibrant way. I'd like to rekindle that. I, I really would like to rekindle the music in terms of good words, good tunes and good beats. And uh, so I'm going to be doing a lot of work over the near you know, few, next few years to try and grow that part of Terra Illumination. So I am wondering, I don't, I don't want to put you in the spot, but do you think we can maybe hear something just at, at least a little bit? So people who doesn't Yeah, you don't want to put me in the spot, but you're going to put me in the spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. I mean, if that's possible, that no, would be. No, no, we can do that. Uh, I kind of, because I had a kind of a, um, you know, kind oh, of yeah. thing that this was going to happen because uh, the music <laughs> is normally part of a tarot channel. And that's what's kind of fun about what we're doing here is that we're kind of branching outside and above and beyond tarot. And I'll, so I will. Now, I can't guarantee the sound quality because we're working with very, in some ways, very advanced technology here, but also in some ways, it's very primitive. I don't know what the sound quality is going to be like here with our little microphones or whatever, but I will uh, sing a song for you. It'll be I appreciate that. And I think everybody does too. So that will be awesome. Um, and I know it's going to be live and it's going to be uh, spontaneous. Okay. And I like that a lot. I'm just letting you know that the guitar is not even tuned. Uh, I don't know if it's tuned, but it's here. So I'm just going to play, a, it, this is a little waltz. It's a, okay. like it's a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So what I'd like to do is encourage people to get very, very old school, very romantic, way before pop music ever existed. <laughs> Elvis Presley and people like that, or Frank Sinatra, going back to the time where people would actually do... Um, Waltzes, very slow and gentle. So this is kind of an acoustic waltz, and it's called the Blue Light. I, blue Light. I hope I can remember the lyrics. If it gets choppy, because I'm not very good at remembering my own songs. Okay. So, Come on, TL. Here we go. I witness the blue lights around you. Hold on. <laughs> I've already forgotten the one. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was going well. It was going really well. Yeah, I think I got it. I think I got it. Once I get in the flow, it'll be okay. Hold on. This is what happens when you do a, a live interview. This is exactly yeah. what happens when this I do This is part of it. This is awesome. I've witnessed the blue lights around you. Mixed with gold and turquoise surrounding you. Pouring down on you like a shower that you shared with us for an hour. And though sometimes it feels like we're fading, 
I know you won't let it all disappear. Your love is the essence, it burns incandescent. Your love is the lighthouse, my dear. Your love is the essence, it burns incandescent. Your love is a lighthouse, my dear. Shining eternal, most especially when things get infernal. When things get all battered and shattered, lost in darkness, that's when it matters. Sometimes it feels like it's fading. I know you won't let it all disappear. Your love is the essence, it burns and incandescent. Your love is a lighthouse, my dear. Your love is the essence, it burns and incandescent. Your love is a lighthouse, my dear. Your love is the essence, it burns incandescent. Your love is a lighthouse, my dear. Your love is the essence, it burns incandescent. Your love is a lighthouse, my dear. Abba, bravissimo, Tiel. Thank you so much. I love the I love the song and I I thought the lyrics were really profound. I really like. And maybe I'm maybe you could sing it in Spanish. How about that? Ooh la la! Okay, now I'm on the spot. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk later. We'll talk that's later. Another, that's another show. Yeah. When you show your face, I'll talk about singing. Let's 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 do that. What do okay, so it sounds like we're making a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there's so much to talk. I, there's so much I want to ask you and I have a conversation with you. It's so easy to talk to you, um, but I know you have limited time. I yeah. know you have another commitment. So I just want to touch. And again, I want to have you over one more time because I felt that we just haven't touched the tip of the iceberg. There's lots of stuff that we need to cover. But um, again, I want to tell you that I bought your book wealth money and financial global oh, structure. Yeah, yeah 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 Woo! that was that was intense yeah um, it's a very serious are you in a, i mean you came out with this book it's pretty good it's really dense uh, there's a lot of information there's a great perspective on what's going to happen in 2020 yeah, um, uh -huh. I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> you're a musician you're an empath we're a title reader you are a, i mean a con celebrity consultant i mean come on now, how does this book came uh, about? I mean, how did you come up with this book? Is I'm talking about finance and global restructuring and it's a lot of stuff. I know it's a very heavy book. It's a very very serious book. It is. I write it but in it's a way. Great. I tried to write it in a way that wouldn't scare people, uh, but I happen. I'm just, um, you know, it's very hard to prove any of this stuff, but. You know, sometimes I feel and sense things 5, 10, 15 uh, years in advance, even more, and I don't know what to do with it. And that little book that's available right now was actually uh, the, the original drafts of the manuscript were written years ago because oh, really? of what I was feeling uh, on the global, uh, the global scale, on the, uh, on the collective. And the so when you put 2020 it wasn't like you did the book two years ago it was no, like no. <laughs> no the book took me several years to write and then i published it uh, about a year and a half ago and now it is highly relevant and there are some other really top line famous uh, astrologers who are uh, in agreement with some of the principles that i put across 
So I'm very proud. I feel like I called it out because I actually called it out years ago, January 2020. Correct. You have, I mean, you put a certain yeah. day. It's the 2020. Yeah, so it's January. Did it that happen because, I mean, you also, you're not just a tarot reader. You are also very into and very, uh, have a lot of expertise in the astrological realm. Yeah. So yeah, it's true is that also is linked a little bit and how did you manage uh, the reading of the stars and the cosmos? And that's what you came out with the 2020 or was yeah. just like, well, well I, it, it's actually kind of in reverse. It's what feeling in my intuition, my body, my heart and my soul. And I kept thinking, I need validation because this is absolutely freaking me out. Wow. And so I just have to keep digging and digging. And then I saw all the beautiful sacred geometry that lined up and I realized, oh my gosh. And mm -hmm. that makes sense. I can see it all. You know, when you're doing the astrology, it's just kind of like looking at a clock. There's just all these things ticking around and around, and it's very, very scientific and pure. It's, you know, the same information that they use for NASA space uh, launches uh, with, you know, the gravity and the movement and the position of the planets is the same information that the astrologers use to make their uh, evaluations. And so it's, you know, all I did was I, I need to correlate my intuition with some of the data. So I started looking at the closer and closer I got to the data, wow. I realized, oh my gosh, we've got something very profound happening here. And it is to do with the astrological clock that takes us to January 2020. That's yeah. what I tell you. And the whole book is about my personal views of the energy that's happening around that time. And it's going to be very much to do with global restructuring financial restructuring, governmental restructuring, and it's going to affect everybody on the planet. It isn't just like, oh, a little bit of stuff in Wall Street, a little bit of stuff in Correct. China or whatever. It's going to be a global transformation. I think, it, I think it's a great book. I read it. Um, I think there's also uh, a lot of information and a lot of resources. You also put some links. Uh, yes about how can other people can get more information or can get educated further down. I mean, you provide a whole spectrum so people can empower themselves in terms of the financial situation. So I think it's really important. And I would like to um, know if you will be interested to come very soon, come back here in Pretty Profundo, and we just touch um, the basis, I mean, the, the book, because it's a, as a, as a big book, has a lot of oh, yeah. information. It's yeah. very important and as a serious book. And I think that that's a topic that 2020 is when, I mean, we're already 2019. We're, we're, we're I mean, basically looking exactly one you know, year from now. Time is not linear anymore. So time is going like yeah, this. It's going like that. Bam, 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 bam. So I would like to have you as soon as possible back. So we can touch bases okay, with that. Right. But let's, let's do if that. You can tell, if you just can tell people, because I just want people, first of all, I got the book in Amazon. And I got it in a Kindle version because I was traveling. I was going to Peru um, to one of my spiritual trips. And I bought it and I got it in my Kindle. So it was easy, really easy to read. And it was really, I mean, it was fantastic. So I want to invite people to go there and check your book either they buy it and they ship it yeah. or either you just buy it a uh, digital copy. Yeah, I, but, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert marketing thing, whatever. But yeah, you can get it on Amazon. Basically, you can go to Terra Illumination on Amazon and the book is there. Uh, you talk about basically the five bullets, um, the five things that um, are important, basically, that we have to keep in mind, banking, borrowing, I mean, currency, uh, I think it's protection and timing. Absolutely. You're talking about the real, the hard realities. What's happening specifically in the astrology around January 2020 is that the planet Saturn is going to be in hard uh, conjunction and alignment with Pluto. And Jupiter is going to be very, very close. So it's going to be completely, it's going to blow open all these amazing new opportunities about how we can go forward from here, but it's also going to be some very hardcore, serious reality checks about what we need to do to clean up our act uh, as human beings regarding uh, those subject matters of finance, uh, debt, money, uh, and how we 
how we understand and attribute value to ourselves and each other, because once, once the planet Pluto moves into Aquarius around 2026 or whatever it is, uh, the whole planet is going to go through a lot of convulsions. We've got the Uranus and Taurus aspects to consider. So there's going to be a lot of very convulsive, very physical changes happening on the planet in terms of politics, uh, society, uh, the actual planet itself, things like tectonic plates, uh, extreme weather conditions. It's going to affect everyone and everything across the whole planet, one way, shape, or another. And we haven't witnessed anything like this uh, for a very long time. The nearest comparison I have is in American history is 1776. And you'll have to read the book to find to understand what I'm talking about. I don't I can't really tell you anymore. I'm exhausted about all these things. So it's better you just read the book. Correct. And I read it and I invite everybody to do so. But I would love to have you back and focus a little bit more in this because I think it's a very important topic and it's yeah. around the corner. Sure. Yeah, it's a very no. serious side of terror illumination. I like to be happy. I like to do art, music, and writing. I like to have good company, good food, and sleep, and be healthy, and um, help people to find their own way to the same thing. But there's also a serious side to terror illumination, too, and that's like an example in the book, for sure. And I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. That's a the, that's the duality that we've been talking about, that as much light as you have, you need to have darkness, because you know you cannot have one if you don't have the other one. Yeah, so, you have to be aware now, of it. Um, I, wanna, I wanna, first of all, thank you for your time, for being here. I really appreciate, um, I love Tar Illumination. I'm a fan of your work. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. And I just wanna leave with the last question. And it's pretty profound, you know, this is pretty profundo. For okay. everybody who doesn't know, profundo means profound in Spanish, just saying. Okay. But I just want to ask you, what change of the world you want to be part of? Mm. I'd like to be part of a change in the world where I can live by example. I can live by example, having been exposed to some of the worst abominations you can imagine in humanity and uh, the most amazing mind-boggling opportunities you can imagine in humanity. And um, where, I, where I would like to do, I would like to, I would like to be, my greatest like, honor and pride would be able to live by example. It doesn't matter how humble that is in terms of three-dimensional terms. I'd like to be able to live by example where I, I, I would love to get as close to nature as possible. Uh, the land, the water, the food, the trees, the plant, animals, uh, in such a way that is as um, pristine as possible. Uh, humanity has left a massive trail, and we need to clean up. I'm very much into. I'm not. I'm not a saint. I mean, I eat. Uh, I'm going to admit it. I admit. I, I I eat meat, and I do uh, things like. <laughs> I have my little my little beverages. And, no judgment here, no judgment. And things like that. And I have plastic bags in the house. And I uh, I burn up gasoline when I take a bus ride or fly on an airplane. You're killing me. You're killing me. Yeah. But I love the idea of let's just take it all down, get back to what really, really counts, which is uh, good company, uh, like things like warmth, companionship, honesty kindness, compassion, consideration, respect, good listening, good understanding, uh, really a lot, a lot of listening. It's very important to listen to people and allow them to have their voice so that they can at least get a chance of getting on the path of to, to love thyself. There are so many people that are not on path, and it's going to be a long time for them to get on path. And I'd like to be a living example of someone who is on path no matter how apparently successful or not, it doesn't matter. The idea is to be uh, in your integrity, to love thyself. I think that is a, a fabulous message. I think that that is a fantastic that we're ending this interview with those words. Thank you so much for being here.
I am going to do something. Um, that question, I'm going to ask that question as a final question to all my guests. So I'm just going to start putting that over here. And maybe one day we're going to create something, a piece of art or something with all those um, intentions and with all that energy. So oh, yeah. PL, thank you so much for being here. We love you. For everybody, don't forget uh, First Fridays for the Healing Event and Tire Illumination and every Sunday. Six o'clock Pacific time. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, and just check out Tire Illumination in YouTube and check uh, Pretty Profundo on YouTube and also check my website www.prettyprofundo.com. See you guys later and talk to you soon. Ciao, dear. Thank, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, Pretty Profundo. Thank you so so much. It's been wonderful. Bye bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye.